If you knew what your true yes was and what your true no was in all areas of your life, would you be able to choose faster and easier? What futures would those choices create? Everyone is capable of connecting to their bodies in a way to have more exuberant and joyful living now and in the future. Now, here is your host of Choosing a Different Future with Ceres. Hi, everyone. I'm Ceres Raquel Rivas Verdejo, and you're here for Choosing a Different Future with Ceres, myself. And I am really interested in this topic today. Who would like to receive more? We're going to be talking about receiving today and all that it means and all that it doesn't mean. Um, but before we get started, I definitely want to make sure that if you're new to me, if you're new to the show, that you know a little bit about me, you know a little bit about what's going on here. So this show um, is all about talking about how you can choose to create a different future beyond what has been projected and expected of you, perhaps by other people, perhaps by yourself, you're projecting it on yourself. And we have some upcoming events as well that, that help you access this even more. Um, I do this by being a family and child coach so and a speech language pathologist. I work with families using different tools from all these different modalities and also a lot of evidence-based practices where I actually look at the strengths of each family member, the strengths of each individual, and then how it works as the whole unit so that everyone in the family thrives. I am also a body relationship coach, which means, wait, have you heard of it before? You probably haven't heard of it, right? Uh, if you have, let me know because it's a new thing that I'm like, oh, this is really what I do. <laughs> I connect with your body and then facilitate you to connect with your body. I stimulate this awareness in, within your body so that it's so clear, it's hard for you to ignore it, as tempting as that may be. And then, then you get to partner with your body to create whatever you'd like to create as, as your life, as your business, within your relationships and beyond. And then I've also happened to have created this cool body process called the living and dying body process. And as much as the, the, the name of it might be like, wait, whoa, it's actually a really gentle, really nurturing and invites you to have exuberant living with your body. So these upcoming events that we have going on, definitely check out our Expansive Energies group. It is a supportive, yummy group where we meet twice a month, 45 minutes. It's been going on for over a year now, and we have a different theme each month. This month's theme is what's your power and it's going to look at how we sometimes we don't actually access and are willing to use all of the powers that are at our disposal perhaps it's because we're not we don't know what they are yet or we put them on the shelf or we shut them down and what we do is in this group we simulate these powers our awareness of them and it forces us to actually look at them and then if we would like we get to create with them so I definitely invite you to check out the Expansive Energies group. We meet on Zoom every two weeks, and there's also an audio recording for those that can't come on live and for everyone that does come on live. The information is at empoweringlightlanguage.com slash Expansive Energies. And you can also check out the links that are below the replay as well. And then upcoming in the new year, we're going to be having a Being a Different Possibility group that is based on Being a Different Possibility family and child coaching program that I have, but this is going to be a group that supports people who either have families, are wanting to have clarity and ease with their families, their children, those that work with children and families so that they get tools to do that more effectively and in a maybe a different way than they've ever considered before. Now, today's call, today's episode today, I am really interested in this and interested in what you get from it. The title is When You Find It Hard to Receive. How many of you are interested in receiving more? Me, 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 me. Okay. So where are the caring givers, the healers and the educators of the world? Those people that connect and want to nurture others. Are we willing to receive as much as we give? Really ask yourself this. Are we willing to receive as much as we give? If you've been told it's more valuable to give than to receive and you're functioning from that, well, what does that create for your health, for your life, for your business, for your relationships? 
What if it wasn't about one or the other, giving or receiving? When we care for ourselves, as we facilitate something greater in the bodies and the lives and businesses of others, when we care for ourselves, we can facilitate something greater for other people. It's not one or the other. So in this show, we're going to get into it, dive deep. We're going to give specific tips on how you can prioritize self-care as you nurture, tend, and guide others so that you can have harmony with how you live your life. So this is going to be some tools that I've used specifically for the parents that work with me, for the educators that work with me, the therapists, for people who are the emergency contacts. You know who you are. If you're out there and you're listening to this, you know you are it, that everyone's calling you when there's a crisis, that, okay? And for those of you that maybe you don't have a lot of people in your life, but you get that you're probably not receiving as much as you know as possible. This episode is for you, okay? Um, Before we get into that, I want to acknowledge that I've gotten some beautiful comments about the last two episodes. Uh, One of them, the when their behavior doesn't match what you know episode. Uh, Someone said, wow, I like that question. What's my yes with this person? And what's my no with this person? And yes, it's a very simple yet powerful tool. And for each person, it's different as to how it shows up, our yes and no. And so I love helping people find this out for themselves. And then I get to add to my database of some of the ways that this can show up. (laughs) Another comment that was sent in, I am way more clear now. I was doubting myself when someone would tell me something that didn't seem to match. Thank you so much. I won't be doubting myself as much anymore. You are super duper welcome. Thank you for sending in the comments and we welcome that feedback all the time. So if you would like to send us any messages at any time, you can email me at empoweringlightlanguage at gmail.com or you can comment on any of the platforms that you're connecting us, connecting with us through. So we will be increasing our awareness today about what it means to receive, where we have stopped ourselves from receiving, and how we can create faster and easier pathways to having more so that we can motivate ourselves to choose what will create different futures that include abundance, connection, and joyful living. Would you like abundance, connection, and joyful living? I don't want to sue. (laughs) All right, if that's something that you're interested in, you know, belt in, get comfortable, and let's go. So first, let's start off this with this idea. What does giving even mean? All right. Take a moment and look for yourself. What does giving mean to me? For a lot of the people that I interact with, and for, and that's, you know, I think also a lot of people in the world too, not even if they don't interact with me, there, there's this idea of a martyrdom with giving. There's a sacrificial type of energy with it. Perhaps it's because I work with a lot of educators and therapists. I work with a lot of healers where it's their calling, it's their mission, it's their passion. And that is really beautiful to be of service. That is really beautiful to contribute to the world. And what if you didn't have to be killing your body taking your, cutting off your receiving, taking away from you actually having what you would like as you're giving to other people. So really, really look at this. What does giving mean to you? Because if we don't look at this part, we actually can't see where we might be receiving or where we might be cutting off our receiving. We're going to go there today. Okay. So for me, When I think of giving, I think of, well, what is going to create the most for everyone involved? What is actually being asked for here from me, personally, uniquely me? And then what's actually being asked for from maybe somebody else? Am I willing to actually let somebody else maybe do some of the lead work? Am I willing to receive, whoa, there's that word of today, Am I willing to receive and collaborate with other people, co-create with other people, all right? So giving can be super, super beautiful and does not have to include sacrifice and martyrdom. 
It doesn't have to be a killing of your body, a cutting off of your awareness, okay? I know it may be a little bit tricky for us to really look at this because a lot of the models, myself included, were that. I was raised by two teachers. My mom was a bilingual educator. My dad was a bilingual educator in the public schools and also a coach for basketball, volleyball, and tennis. And I saw them often not do the hobbies and the things that brought them joy as they were the first ones in the school and the last ones out. A lot of people think that teachers get all the summers off, not the teachers that I know, not the really good ones, because you often are planning and prepping and setting up and cleaning out and moving things around in the, on the summer months. What if you have to change classrooms? Oh, they just changed all the materials. And so you have to get you have to get familiar with all this new textbooks and materials and the new program that the district wants you to use, even though you've been using this other one with success before. And you have to. So it takes a lot more time than a lot of people think. And this isn't always the case with everyone when it comes to giving. And yet I'd like us to really look at it if it has been the case for you so far for you to be giving in this way, what are some systems that you can put in place where you're still having self-care be a priority in the midst of doing the things that you need to do for your job, for your family, for your relationships, okay? I see the comment from our chat room, uh, giving means taking care of ourselves, thoughts, sometimes over-caring, sometimes giving means over-caring. Yeah, it's like, is it actually truly caring of the person if you're doing everything for them. And this, I see this all the time with parents where they're feeding the kids, even though they should be using the utensils on their own. Like I'm a feeding therapist as well. And I see this all the time where they come to me saying, oh, they're not using the spoon yet. They're not using a fork. They're not feeding themselves. And my first question is, well, what opportunities have they had to do that, to practice that? So if you have a child, if you have someone in your life that it could even be a partner where you're like, hey, they're not doing this. What, what's going on here? Well, what are you doing? What are you being around them that either gives them a chance to practice that or doesn't give them a chance to practice that? Are you being empowering or disempowering? Okay. And then what does receiving mean? Oh, so many things, so many things. Receiving isn't just money, even though that's fun too. Hopefully you're willing to receive money. It also includes receiving more of yourself. That's probably my biggest part of receiving is receiving more of your awareness, receiving more of you. I do these, these calls and these posts about more of you Monday in my Soaring Beyond Definition group. It's a Facebook group. So if you want to check it out, feel free. It's a free private group. And we do these little question prompts and posts to inspire us to soar beyond definition. And one of the ways that we can do that is by re being willing to receive more of ourselves, more of our powers, the theme of the Expansive Energies Group, more judgment without point of view. Man, how much energy are we using avoiding people judging us? I was exhausted trying to be the perfect daughter, trying to be the perfect friend, the perfect granddaughter, the perfect professional, per the perfect business owner. And as soon as I was willing to make mistakes, y'all saw that call where I was first on the network, the, uh, the one about uh, knowing what doors to open and which to close. Check out, check it out. The content's great. But if you guys listened to that one or you watched it on the TV network, you would have noticed that, yeah, I did a bit of a faux pas at the end there, right? Not a big deal. Laughed it off. The people in the, in the audience laughed it off with me and we kept going. If I waited until I was totally perfect, I wouldn't be able to connect with you today. I wouldn't be able to receive more of myself and develop my speaking skills, develop my, my ability to facilitate more people, and my willingness to actually connect with different people that wouldn't otherwise know about me, okay? So that's a really nonlinear, very different way of thinking about it. 
But receiving is actually being willing to receive everything without any point of view, especially not judging you, your body, and your choices so far. And that's all they are, our choices so far. So it's time for our first break of the show. When we return, we will continue to talk about receiving. You are listening to the Choosing a Different Future show with CDs, myself, CDs, on the Inspired Choices Network. When we return, we will continue to talk about when you find it hard to receive. We will be right back. Most people haven't been taught how to listen and partner with their bodies in order to create lives that include clarity, pleasure, ease, and connection. Tuning in to Choosing a Different Future with Ceres, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and resources on how to use your awareness of bodies and energy to your advantage. Ceres is a family and child coach and therapeutic energy worker who will guide you to get clear and acknowledge what's brilliant, magical, and a gift about you. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Choosing a Different Future show with series. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Connect with series through her website, empoweringlightlanguage.com or send an email to empoweringlightlanguage at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. I am Ciris Raquel Rivas Verdejo on Choosing a Different Future with Ciris. And today, our show topic is when you find it hard to receive. And before we went on break, we were discussing what it means to be to give, what it means to receive. We started talking a little bit about that and also the importance of looking at where we stand with that right now, what we're willing to do and choose with that so far. Make sure to check us out in our chat. You can join us in our chat if you're listening right now. You can also join us using the ICN app, which is the Inspired Choices Network app on any smart device, any TV. We're on all smart TVs now, super excited about that. And Make sure you can connect with us on any of the 450 or more platforms for podcasts and TV. Super, super pleased that we can reach out to you in whatever way is the easiest and more fun for you. And subscribe to us so that you can be notified about any upcoming episodes, all right? So continuing on with when you are when you find it hard to receive. Um... Gosh, so much places where we can go with this. So we were talking about what it could mean to receive. So it's really about me, about receiving everything without any point of view, particularly receiving more of you. People come to me complaining about how they keep stopping themselves, how they keep slowing themselves down, how they aren't creating what they desire. And then after identifying their limiting patterns or beliefs, around the areas of their life that they're trying to have something different in, where they're looking for change, they realize that they can stop limiting themselves and create what they want faster and easier. So we're going to look at some of the limiting patterns that we might have, some limiting beliefs that we might have around receiving. I'm going to mention some of the most common ones, but this is not an all-inclusive list by any means. So if you know of one that I haven't mentioned, email me about it at empoweringlightlanguage at gmail.com. I'd love to always be adding to the list. There is no limit to how much we limit ourselves, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, be a leader, be an example to others, and let me know what you know about this so that I can then contribute even further to other people, okay? I would really appreciate it. But I'm going to give you the ones where my clients, where the people that work with me, they mention this over and over and over again. 
The first one is when people are, use time to define themselves, stop themselves, or slow things down. So what do I mean by that? Let's say you have a project for business going on, or you um, are trying to get a certain amount of things done in your day, in your week. Like there are some days where I'm working 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., seeing different clients, being in meetings, creating content, different things like that. And so I could be like, oh my gosh, I don't have time. I have this much amount of time. I only have 12 hours in this day or 24 hours in this day. Eh, not your best choice. <laughs> not your best choice to do that. It really, just think about it. How does your body feel when you do that? Is it like, I have so much energy. I, the world is at my, at my disposal. All these energies are here for me. I can do this totally. Or is it like, contraction freak out and you get really tense and heavy and like ah, you feel like this pressure on you if you're like most of the people that talk with me and interact with me using time as a parameter for how much is possible or not as a guide to let you know what you could or could not do is super limiting and actually makes it really heavy for your body and guess what when something's really heavy and solid and like a pressure on your body is it easier or is it harder to create? Is it easier to receive or is it harder to receive? You got it. It is way, way, way harder. So catch yourself. Listen to yourself. Listen to what you're saying out loud. And also those, those whispers, ideas that are in your head, those thoughts that can sometimes have this time component to it that then limits you and slows things down. When I don't think about how much time I have in a day, oh my gosh, I get so much done. Think about the moments when you had, let's say an hour to do something that most people would take, would need a whole day or multiple hours to do. And when you're in that flow, ooh, you know that flow, right? When you're in that flow, you go like, boop, you look up, you're like, I did all of that in this amount of time. It's because you didn't make the time significant. You didn't let it box you in and define what was possible. This is part of soaring beyond definition, okay? So are you using time to slow things down? Are you using time to, to cut off your receiving? If so, consider choosing something different to create a different future, all right? Uh, yeah, go ahead and give me some examples of where you might be using time to slow yourself down. Uh, comment on that. Yep. <laughs> and then uh, the next limiting belief, the next one that I often see, not a week passes that I don't hear some example of this. All right. You're going to get it. As soon as I mention it, you are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. How many people do you know, perhaps you're one of them, that uses age to define themselves, to stop themselves, to slow themselves down? Oh, I'm too old for this. Oh, it's too late for me to do this. Oh, I, I'm too young to do this. I have to wait until I get experience with this before I blah, blah, blah. Okay. These are all ways of using age or things that are kind of associated with age, like experience to, <laughs> I love the comment from our chat room. Hell no. Excuses. Erroneous. I love that from the movie um, Wedding Crashers, where Vince Vaughn is like, erroneous on all counts. Who remembers that movie? I think of that. Anytime I catch myself making those type of excuses or justifications, I'm like, nope, erroneous. That is not my reality. That is not what's true for me. <laughs> and so I would make it something that's significant to me and relevant for what reason? Not going to happen. But we all do this. We all know people that do this. And you can see the impact that this has. It immediately cuts off your receiving. You're like, oh, well, I can't. It's, oh, I had a really good friend. This actually makes me think of another example. Um, one of my good friends was an amazing teacher, one of the best kindergarten teachers I ever met. We were first getting to know each other. And we were hanging out finally outside of the work setting, which is great to have that rapport and not always be about work with your colleagues, right? And she would say, you know, CDs, I'm so grateful for our friendship because as you know, it's 
harder to make friends as you get older. And I was like, huh? Like it totally didn't land in my world. I was like, wait, what? And I literally looked off in space and was like, is she talking to me? Like, is this a thing? And I realized, oh, wow. For a lot of people, they have that point of view. And then I looked at her friendships and I looked at her willingness to go out there and make connections. She was using this as a way to, to stop herself from putting herself out there and doing the things that would create would create lasting or new, new and lasting friendships. And for me, I was just busting down the walls. I was like, you're cool. We're cool together. We're, let's have fun. You're amazing. Let's do it. And I didn't think about how old she was. I didn't think about how old I was. I was just like, we wouldn't connect and be friends for what reason? Let's do this. And so now I get that that was a way for her to not receive as many friends as she wanted. But the other thing too, it makes me wonder, well, did she really want more friends or was she using that to explain why she didn't have as many friends, but she actually didn't want more anyway? So it can be both or something else. And if you know something else about this, let me know. But for me, I find that when people start making decisions based on age, it often cuts off your receiving. And so is there anywhere that you're talking about your age in a way that is contracting your world, that is putting up walls and barriers and separating you from the very people and things that you would like to have more of? And if you are, and it's okay if you are, you can be like, oh, well, that's interesting that I've been choosing that so far. All right. <sighs> I'm going to put my big girl pants on. I'm going to put my big boy pants on. I'm going to put my person pants on because not all of us identify as boys and girls. And now what are we going to, what am I going to choose? All right. So you can totally do this. This is again about listening to yourself, listening to the language that you're using, and then pivoting to a different future and a different possibility. Oh my goodness. So here's the thing, this is related, this next limiting pattern is related to the other two and it's its own thing. Are you ready? Maybe you futurists out there because there are many of you that are super perceptive, that are psychic, that are mind readers. Do, 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 do. Maybe you can know the next thing I'm about to say before I say it. I'm gonna give you a couple seconds. Mm, my X-Men friends. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, the next limiting pattern. How many of you are doing this or know someone that's doing this? How many of you are lying to yourselves? Mm -hmm. If you're lying to yourself, guess what? Do you get to receive what you'd like to receive if you're lying to yourself? If you're actually disconnecting from the very person who you say, oh, I'd like to receive more. He's like, do you really? <laughs> do you really, really, really? Uh, you're going to get to meet my mom soon. She's going to be a guest on a beautiful series that we're going to start called Limitless Azúcar. For those of you that know my mom, Sulma Verdejo Carrion, We've done some other videos and content under the umbrella term of limitless azúcar. And she would tell us when we were growing up, do you really, really want it? Because if you really want it, you will go around that mountain. You will dig a hole under that mountain. You will blow up the mountain. You will climb over it, but you will not let anything stop you. And think about this, how powerful this could be as a kid, no matter what we want, what we were asking for. She was empowering us to not give up and to think outside the box, to consider all possibilities so that we could have it and create it. Amazing mom, I chose really, really well, right? So on that note, it's time for our next break. Um, when we come back, we are gonna continue to talk about when you find it hard to receive. You are listening to Choosing a Different Future with CDs, myself, CDs on Inspired Choices Network. See you soon. Most people haven't been taught how to listen and partner with their bodies in order to create lives that include clarity, pleasure, ease, and connection. Tuning in to Choosing a Different Future with Ceres, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and resources on how to use your awareness of bodies and energy to your advantage. 
Siri is a family and child coach and therapeutic energy worker who will guide you to get clear and acknowledge what's brilliant, magical, and a gift about you. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Choosing a Different Future show with Sirius. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Connect with Sirius through her website, EmpoweringLightLanguage.com, or send an email to EmpoweringLightLanguage at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. I am Siris Raquel Rivas Verdejo, and you're listening to and watching, perhaps, because we're on both, Choosing a Different Future with Siris. And today, our show topic is when you find it hard to receive. So before we went on break, we were discussing some of the limiting patterns that we may have that'll cut off our receiving, that will make it even harder for us to receive. So if you're listening to this episode, there's probably something that you know you are not willing to receive yet, even if you don't have words for it, okay? And that's okay if you don't have the words for it. But when we look at our limiting patterns, we get to actually see where we might be putting roadblocks on our way to having what we'd like to have as our lives, as our businesses, in our relationships, with our families, and more, Okay. So we were talking about last, about the la the limiting pattern of lying to yourself. This connects a lot to when we buy other people's lies as well. If you are lying to yourself, either consciously or unconsciously, you are cutting off your receiving. And let's say if someone's lying to you and then you buy their lie, you also are cutting off your receiving. Is that what you would like to choose? It's your call. It's your life. And this actually connects greatly to the last episode where we talked about when you're not sure of what you want, okay? If you haven't checked out that episode, go ahead and listen to it because here's the thing. If you're not sure of what you want, it's often really common. I, I know this all the time where if you don't really know what you want, then you start to use what other people want of you to guide your life, Okay. And so then you go on automatic pilot, perhaps living out someone else's expectations, their life, instead of what you would really want, because you haven't prioritized yet, perhaps, knowing for yourself, well, what do I truly, truly desire? Okay. And so if you're not sure what you really, really want, you're definitely going to want to check out that episode when you're not sure of what you want. And... I'm going to talk about this today because then a lot of times we'll lie to ourselves and say, what I want doesn't matter. Going back to what we talked about in the beginning of our chats today of people who are martyrs. And so martyrs often are cutting off their receiving. And for whatever reason, they think that not receiving is more valuable than receiving. And it doesn't have to be one or the other. We can be giving, we can be of service to people, we can be educating people, be leaders, be examples to them and also receive for ourselves and nurture our bodies and create phenomenal lives. Phenomenal. Are you willing? Okay. So where else might you be lying to yourself? So one of the common ones that I, that I interact with a lot is people pretending that they're, they're not as much of an incredible, amazing person as they really are. Maybe they haven't tapped into their powers, which again is the topic of our expansive energies group that I definitely invite you to check out at empoweringlightlanguage.com slash expansive energies. We're going to be talking about, well, what is your power? And guess what? I'm going to give you a secret. There's not just one. For all of us, we have different ones. And not only do we have different ones within us, 
there are so many different ones available, period. There are more that are being discovered every single day if we're willing to look at this, like really, truly look at this, all right? Now, are you willing to actually not base your life off of other people's expectations and their projections of you? This is another limiting pattern that can cut off our receiving. Are you living someone else's life? Are you living your mom, your dad's life? Are you living the life that's expected of you because of your race, because of your sexual orientation, because of your community, whatever that is? There's a bunch of more reasons why you might be living someone else's life. And how is that working for you? Do you have joyful living? Do you have what you truly in your wildest imaginings and beyond that, what you would really like to have? The life I have right now is beyond my wildest imaginings and I know it's just the beginning. And I didn't always know this. Whoa, did I not always know this. When I had chronic pain, when I was buzzing with anxiety and I couldn't even sleep more than three or four hours a night because I was so anxious, I definitely did not know that this was possible. So I don't say this lightly. I don't say this flippantly. It's not always easy to, to receive, but as you build up your stamina and your muscles for receiving more and more, you get to have something completely unexpected and really, really beautiful. And it's not that you're not going to have challenging moments. Life happens sometimes. There's been a lot of things in the last couple of years that have been quite challenging for me. And yet there's so much gratitude for the people and the things that are showing up. And I know that more of that is going to show up because guess what? I'm willing to look at these limiting patterns for myself on, on an ongoing basis and choose to not have them running, especially not unconsciously. Okay, I'm not going to be blindsided by these limiting patterns anymore. How about you? Okay, another thing, speaking of unconscious versus conscious, another limiting pattern that might be going on is anti-consciousness or self-sabotage. Now, I'm going to lean more toward the word anti-consciousness. So let's say you're aware of something that is a good idea for you, that will create more for you, that would be super nurturing to your body and to your life. You got this awareness, here it is, prop, 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 trying to get your attention. Ha, 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 ha. And then you go, yeah, and you turn your way from it. Yeah, that sounds good and all, but I'm gonna go over here. Don't be surprised if you aren't receiving what you'd like to receive that you say that you really want if you're turning away from your awareness. Okay, if you turn away from the very people and things that you know will create more for you, then you're actually cutting off your receiving. All right, so maybe jot down, I love doing this with my, with my clients, jot down the things that you know will actually create more for you, that will expand your world, the places that you could go, the trainings that you could take, the jobs that you can learn about and, and apply to. The, maybe somewhere else to move that you don't want to live where you're living right now, but you haven't made it a priority to do whatever it takes to move, whatever that is. For each of us, it's different. Write those down and then look at, is there, what are the action steps you can take to actually start receiving that and move toward it? And then hold yourself accountable to that. Okay. Write it in your calendar. I'm going to do this by this day, or I'm going to get this done sooner rather than later. I'm going to address most of these, more of them than not. So it doesn't have to be an all or nothing, but more of them than not, I'm going to take these steps. A lot of us, we judge ourselves if we didn't do everything on our to-do list. There's always going to be something that rolls over the next day. It's, a, it's an ongoing thing. And yet the things that are really most required, somehow they always get done. Isn't that interesting? So Go ahead and jot down the things that you've already been getting messages about. Listen to the other episodes where we talked about receiving messages from your body, in case you're wondering about what I mean by this messages idea. And then write down the one or two action steps that you can take to make it happen. All right. And if you would like support on how to hold yourself accountable, someone that'll cheer you up. <laughs> 
then go ahead and reach out to me. I love cheering my people on. You can get a consultation with me and we can talk about the possibilities of how you can receive what you'd like to receive, okay? And then, let's see, do we have time? I think we have time before this next break. Okay, there's another limiting pattern that is super important for us to look at. Let me know if you're ready for this one because this one is really different than anything that we've been told in school. And I would know, I've basically been living in schools my entire life. Again, I had two parents that were teachers. If I wasn't there as a student myself, I was after school or before school with them as they were grading papers, as they were setting up their classrooms. And then now I get to contribute to schools and do parent workshops and staff trainings, and then have my own ongoing caseloads working with certain kids in the schools. A lot of them bilingual students, a lot of them students with autism and ADD and ADHD. And one of the things that I get from that is, wow, if I had learned this at school, if somebody had taught me that this was a possibility, it would have saved me so much heartache and stress. And I mean, maybe I wouldn't have been buzzing so much with that anxiety that I mentioned earlier. The, the limiting pattern I'm referring to is when you are needing things to be linear or in a certain order for you to receive them. Okay, I have to do this first and then this first and then, and then this next and then the following thing so that I can get here. And that's very different than, let me consider all these possible things and I'm gonna have multiple, multiple, what's that phrase? Multiple like um, rods in the fire, right? What is that? That phrase about the weapons, I'm picturing it in my head. A lot of different rods and, and swords. I like swords, I wanna say swords. A lot of swords in the fire. And then I'm gonna see which one is the one that pings at any given moment for me to use to cut through limitation and actually receive what I'd like to receive, okay? So when we actually are functioning from linearity, when we think that we have to have things first A, then B, then C, irons in the fire. Thank you, chat room. <laughs> Thank you, audience. Um, when we actually are willing to receive completely out of wherever it shows up, man, things show up faster and easier, but are we willing for things to be faster and easier or were we more invested in complaining about how slow things are, about, oh, I can't do this, I'm so pathetic, oh, I can't do that, or this person hasn't shown up and I was like, well, we, we don't need to count on that one person. If we had multiple people, that we can check in with and that we can receive from and co-create with, well, it doesn't matter if that one person doesn't show up, does it? So this is one of those big biggies that if we're willing to actually have multiple businesses, multiple people in our lives, multiple huh, ways of creating, multiple communication styles, you know, as a communication specialist, one of the things that I look at is what's the dominant communication style of someone? And then what are the other ones that are pretty close to being dominant that they can develop so that you can actually pivot and use whatever communication style is gonna create the most given the situation. My default one is being very assertive, very clear. Those that know me know this. If that's not everyone's cup of tea. I've learned to develop the other ones because sometimes people need me to be more gentle or be more, I, I don't usually use subtext or anything like that. I'm still pretty clear, but a softer, more modulated approach. It's not all guns blazing as much as I would love to be like, bah, 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 let's go. That, not everyone's are like, I go, whoop, whoop, and they go, whoa. <laughs> so to be really pragmatic and to be able to receive from as many people as possible and for them to receive me, I've learned the different communication styles. And I've learned that I have to be really nonlinear. It's not like, okay, one style and the other and the other. I have to keep checking in. When you do presentations, you're often adapting and seeing what style, what types of supports, be it visual, tactile, verbal, that you need to use all at once because there's multiple people in the audience, all right? So 
Um, it's time for our next break. Lovely people. Oh my goodness, the time is flying by. Um, when we return, we will continue to discuss receiving. And not only receiving, we're going to talk about how we can actually do this in a different way. So we've looked at limiting patterns. And now we're going to get into how can we do this and actually have receiving our way. So you're listening to Choosing a Different Future with CDs, with myself, CDs on the Inspired Choices Network. When we return, we will continue to discuss when there, when it is hard to receive. We'll be right back. Most people haven't been taught how to listen and partner with their bodies in order to create lives that include clarity, pleasure, ease, and connection. Tuning in to Choosing a Different Future with Ceres, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and resources on how to use your awareness of bodies and energy to your advantage. Ceres is a family and child coach and therapeutic energy worker who will guide you to get clear and acknowledge what's brilliant, magical, and a gift about you. This is the Choosing a Different Future show with Ceres. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Connect with Ceres through her website, empoweringlightlanguage.com, or send an email to empoweringlightlanguage at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. All right. Welcome back, everyone. I am Ceres Raquel Rivas Verdejo. I'm choosing a different future with Ceres. And today our show topic is when it is hard to receive. So before we went on break, we were discussing the limiting patterns that we might have that will be cutting off our receiving. And then we started to talk about how we can shift to a different possibility. Well, one of the ways that we talked about, and I'd like to talk a little bit more about, is actually having simultaneous receiving instead of linear receiving. Instead of it being like, first this, then this, then that, what if we actually were able to lower our barriers, lower down our walls, soften any tension in our bodies, and actually receive from a lot of different directions? That could be having multiple people on your team instead of just one or two. That could be about having multiple ways that people can find you and reach you when it comes to business. I love the term multiplier. I learned this term from Michael Burnoff, who works with neurolinguistic psychology, phenomenal business coach and, and facilitator and all these different things around mindset. And I started to look at multipliers for myself, and it so matches what I'm talking about right now about receiving simultaneously in a lot of different ways. So what would be a multiplier for you? You know, it could be with business where you multiply things by having, instead of it being like you wait until um, someone's done with your coaching program to the end before you ask for a referral, what if you actually started asking for the referrals as you go along or you ask them, um, you use the testimonials and ask for testimonial before they get to the end of the program? You don't have to say program first, testimonial, referral next, and so forth and so on. And so as you're having multiple clients, and I really hope you're getting multiple clients if you'd like them, then you can be having multiple other new people coming in and lined up. Maybe you could have a waiting list. Um, for when it comes to personal life, man, what if we could actually have more than one friend? I remember when the best friends were like a thing growing up. I don't know about you, but there was always this big priority, like a big value to having your one best friend. And that was a setup. <laughs> I'm calling it right now. That was such a setup. I actually needed to have multiple best friends. And so actually opening myself up to multiple people was really, really key to me having a different possibility. There's so many different ways that this can show up. Now, make sure to join us. Make sure to join us in the upcoming episodes. We're gonna be meeting on Fridays at 10 a.m. Eastern with all the upcoming episodes around this. We're running out of time a little bit here today, but. If you have any questions about anything I've said, please message me at empoweringlightlanguage at gmail.com and check out all the links associated with this episode. I've been so, so grateful to be talking to you about receiving. I'd love for you to receive way, way, way more. And if you would like to get a consultation on any of this, go ahead and reach out to me and I can send you the links to schedule a consultation. 
But this has been a wonderful discussion so far. And I really hope that you check out our next show with Ashana Jones and David O'Brien on how to heal for real with Iboga. And Iboga is this really cool, different thing you've never probably even heard of before. I'm still learning about it and I'm excited for you to ask questions and for you to be able to discuss this with, with Ashana and, and David O'Brien. I'm going to read you the description for that episode so that you know um, what we're going to be talking about. So what have you heard about Iboga? Thousands of people have overcome recurring depression, let go of crippling anxiety, moved past traumatic childhoods, ended fear, phobia, self-hate, self-sabotage, and have gone on to heal aspects of themselves they didn't know, they didn't think they ever could. What if you could live with peace of mind and happiness in your heart, no matter what has happened to you? Ah, that sounds so great, doesn't it? <laughs> And so this has been Ashana and David's experience. After searching for upwards of three decades for true and lasting healing, Ashana from Brooklyn and David from Quebec, two completely different individuals, as different as black and white, found themselves in the jungles of Africa in a tiny village with no running water, a village full of happy, healthy humans where for centuries, the indigenous people had been working with a sacred healing plant named Iboga. They will talk about their experiences as they share how they found the path to true and lasting healing and the, B the Bwiti tradition under the tutelage of a 10th generation high shaman in the jungles of, a, of Gabon, Gabon, Africa, and what is possible for those who choose the benefits of this nurturing medicine. So I'm going to be talking with Ashana and David. Make sure to connect and join our, our live chat or send in questions ahead of time if you have questions about Iboga and the ways in which you can use it. We're going to explore the, the tremendous impact that this nurturing medicine has had in the lives of David and Ashana and those that have been working with them, those who have been committed, that have committed their lives to helping others with this traditional African spiritual path and its sacred healing plant. And this ties perfectly into our theme of today about receiving. Personally, health-wise, our body-wise, our body awareness-wise, another multiplier is actually using different modalities, different energies that are at our disposal to create something different. What if you didn't use one system of tools and blind yourself to all other possibilities? I'm constantly looking at all the different tools in my repertoire, and I love learning about new ones like Iboga that we'll be talking about with Ashana and David, because I'm willing to receive from anything and everyone as long as it's going to create more and it's going to be nurturing for my body and it's going to get me closer to the life and living and business and relationships and health and more and more and more that I'd really like to have. Now, how about you? Is there anywhere that you are just choosing one when you can choose all of yourself, all possible options that are going to work for you? That's part of why I created my Choosing It All Your Way coaching program. It's all about actually choosing everything that is possible for you uniquely to choose so that you can have a life that is phenomenal beyond your wildest imaginings. It's all about receiving, everybody. And if you're willing to receive more, you get to have more. And I would love that for each and every one of you. So please, please, please join us on Fridays at 10 a.m. Eastern. That's 10 a.m. Eastern U.S. for all of our upcoming episodes. We have a great lineup. Be on the lookout for the Limitless Asukara series where my mom will be our guest. And we're going to be talking about everything related to divorce and death and separation. We're going to be tapping into her expertise as a bilingual educator and her just being a really rocking mom. So for those parents out there and those of you that know my mom and have appreciated our videos together in the past, we have a very unique relationship. Um, make sure to bookmark those and check those out. Until next time, everyone, I adore each and every one of you and make sure to listen to your body and all the messages that it's sending to you because it would love, love, love for you to have way more fun and way more joy. Bye for now. <laughs>
Series returns Fridays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Mountain, and 7 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, keep choosing what will work for you and your body, your own unique way honoring what will work for you.